Frank Sapa and her mother Would at the best place around should be a very dynamite show. You know, I have no idea what the name of this program is, but you're watching it. Backstage. All you ever want. Backstage. All you ever need. Backstage. Your dreams will be fulfilled once you are there. You'll never want to leave. You want to sell your that backstage pass Backstage Is just for the invited Backstage They've laid on everything ta 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 Welcome to another edition of my streaming <laughs> Backstage International Today I'm doing it together with the the wonderful, the one and only, the queen of blues, the ex-girlfriend and collaborator of David Bowie. Uh, and you, she worked with almost all the big stars, even with Roger Taylor, which will, uh, will be interesting for Queen fans. Dana, the one and only Gillespie. Hi, Dana. Hi there, Rudy. <laughs> nice to be here. And it's backstage, yes? Yeah, it's the Backstage International. Okay, so it's is, in English. Which is in English. Of course, marvelous. And uh, it's just a little sum up because you have a really important reason of being here uh, with me today because we want to make you all aware of this wonderful book, not my book, but Dana's book, Dana Gillespie, Weren't Born a Man, with great pictures and even greater stories. How long did you write on this well, book? It's a bit, I mean, it's a bit hard to tell exactly how long it took me to write because I did it in little bits. And uh, I'm very bad on the computer, so I did it on the computer, so it takes a bit of time. There are some... <laughs> oh, my God. I remember. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, do you know, people used to buy that LP, uh, men Only used to buy it, of and the then they'd put it in a brown paper bag because they didn't want to be seen carrying it home. Uh, you, you really are a beautiful person. Thank you. you well, hopefully inside... Always have been home. and always are. <laughs> um, there's also a, a little bit about us in there. <laughs> There's three pictures. Yes, uh, um, of course I don't find them now, but we can... I uh, think it might be, I don't know page? where it is. No. I don't know, no. I can't remember. Uh, to, to explain, explain a little bit. Well, yeah, we were naked being interviewed We were naked in and in the bathtub, the two of us with, doing with it, television interviews, just like everybody else does, right? Yeah, he said nobody did it with no clothes on. <laughs> we were not ashamed and we didn't care. I think it's in the first half of pictures, if you're looking for yes, it. Yes, I'm looking for but it. But there's one picture in your book too, my this is friend the same, Freddie. This is the same because, you see, I'm in your book, you're in my book. Uh, show me yours, I show yes. you mine. But the <laughs> I think it must 
must be in there somewhere, but... Yeah, but uh, the thing is that... You uh, can't find it. It was a big scandal in Austria. And um, of course been, I don't find it The first time now. it must have been it's, done. It's in not like, in the first part of the Maybe pictures, 1981. Two. We were talking about sex. And here we are. And, the, and, and she... Um, we kind of, th this is the three that happened so far. Uh, the one is sort of recently, and uh, shortly we're going to make <coughs> part four. Yeah, the one at the top, I think we actually do look our best. The one at the bottom, I remember, because you, 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 we're, we we're in the bath, but I had full makeup on, and then I had to go on stage in, in Jazzland, and I was so tired, I nearly fell off the I stage. mean, it's the same bathtub. You know, all three times, and it will be the same bathtub to part number four. But more foam. No, more sex. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Oh, no, no but, well, we don't have sex in the bathtub. No, no, we talk. Is, we, we talk. We talk about, we talk about uh, your career. And, and it's and, very, and it, actually, it's very comfortable sitting in a bathtub. And actually being, being across a photograph of Mick Jagger is not too bad. I mean, <laughs> Jagger and Doritz are, yeah, okay. You have, okay. To have the two important, ah. Just. But please, darlings, buy this book. It's now uh, we are now um, putting in a caption where you best order it. Um, if you order it directly from the publisher, you even get something like this. <coughs> yeah, the publisher. Which is a bonus uh, thing. Um, the same here. I have. Uh, if you order my book from the publisher, um, uh, it's quicker and. And I get more royalties. <laughs> I don't, do you know, I never care about that. What I care about is that people get to read it because n there's not so many people alive that can tell stories from the 60s and 70s with some of these famous people. So it's That's true. Good. I mean, I have to say one thing. I hope you don't hate me for that. But for some reason, we were in your bedroom in your house in London. When? Um, oh, when we were doing the documentary? No, 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 no. The, the young Rudy, saw, 30 yeah. kilos less. And um, I think we were looking at your, um, at your collection of uh, briefmarking, uh, of stamps. Polaroids. Of, of stamps, oh. stamps, no stamps <laughs> or whatever. Okay. Uh, and then suddenly under the bed, it was, it, you must have shown me because how would I know, or I discovered a box with Polaroids. Yeah, so that must have been around 19, in the 70s, because yes. Polaroids didn't exist before then. Yeah, yeah. And, and Bowie and me had the same manager, and he gave me a Polaroid and said, just click. And so I took a lot of pictures. There's another whole box sitting at a friend's place in Spain that I can't get hold of, can't get them back, of all these pictures. Wasn't there a book? I'm not comparing you with anybody. Please yeah. don't get me wrong. But I, for some reason, have, have in my in my in my head that somebody did a book of private parts, Polaroids of private parts of famous people. Maybe I don't know about that. But let's face it: in the 60s and 70s, we was, didn't care. There was the plaster casters in America who used to make plaster casts of all men's. Schwanz, Schwenzer, I don't know how you say it in plural, the penises, the like penises. All, you know, like Mick Jagger. Or and maybe that, yeah. Yeah, and they, they were famous, these girls, it was a California thing, of course. In when the, it was groupies, right? Yeah, yeah, but girl, you know, English girls weren't doing that, but the Americans were so wild, they did it. We were rather kind of tame when I think of what was going on. In no, and I mean, you were an artist, that's a different story, but the, the whole groupie, I mean, I sort of... I sort of miss the groupie time <laughs> because I mean, like being see if you especially when I started. Uh, I mean, you know, there was always the saying that that um, uh, Bill Wyman had the mo when he brought he published a book where he was saying that he slept with three thousand women or something, which I tried to calculate and said I don't really. And he said the reason was, you know, the, all the groupies came to the hotels. We're talking sixties and yeah, 70s, every night after and a after gig. And after Mick Jagger had uh, uh, girls and Keith Richards, he was left over. So you know, he, they said, okay, we go with one. Role. Rolling Stone. It, uh, oh, it's if not. You, if you can't get a band member, then you take the tour manager. Exactly. So you want to see Elvis? You got to see me first. Yeah. Okay. So it's yeah. that's how it was. Although I've never used the word groupie because I kind of almost. It's, dis I, I, it's discriminating. It, right? Well, it's a bit disrespectful because they were girls who were having a good time, Correct. and it was fun to. S more, let's face it; it's probably more fun to sleep with Mick Jagger than if you're than with somebody who's delivering a. Uh, newspapers or something. There's more to talk about. And if you're a fan, 
It's the ultimate accolade. I have one good story with Tell Jenga. Tell me. Yeah, uh, about, about that. Sorry that I'm talking more than you, but uh, <laughs> thing normal. is, we, I was, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was filming um, the tour, I don't know, we, I was filming quite a lot of tours of the Stones, but there was, there was that one where we had a world premiere. Oh, I remember. It was called World Premiere Live. It was a television show. The concept was that I was doing documentary parts, like the rehearsals, this and that. And it was happening while they were physically on stage for the first concert of a tour. That was a thinking change because in the old days people said don't put anything on television until the tour is over because otherwise yeah. people and that was no let's have a little bit as a teaser so we were filming and but only broadcasting one song at the beginning one at the middle and one at the end and the other parts were the, anyway this work went out to 60 or something I directed that and produced it in Stockholm and there was an after show party and there were really the 30 top models of Scandinavia, yeah, standing around. And all the band coming in first before Mick came, you know, everybody was trying, you know, bass play. It was after Bill Wyman. Everybody was trying to, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah. Now, Mick came in with the bodyguard Callahan, Jim Callahan, looked around and said, you, you, and you, turned around and the three best looking women went with him out. He was not even there for two minutes. Wise man. <laughs> and I thought, wow, you know? <laughs> That's how it was in those days. No, but I mean, being Mick Jagger, right? I mean, there is something to I it. I think Led Zeppelin got even more action, actually. That, but I didn't, wasn't that close to the, to the oh, Zeppelin. Yeah. And I tell you something, I was now at the show that they had, and they really have a fucking great show. What, the Stones? The Stones in Vienna. Yeah, no, because the, 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 now the drama and the bass player, they're so tight and the others make their things on, on top of it. I've you know? heard that from everyone. No, and, and I think it's like, I mean, I loved uh, uh, Charlie. Charlie Watts was part of the, of the nucleus of the Stones and, and, and he was a gentleman and I also loved his jazz band. Yeah, know? well, I think that sometimes just one change can make a difference. Charlie was famous because he's, he used to do the, the bass drum on the, on the beat, on the one, the four beats to the bar and he always kept it going but he only had a very small drum kit he never had a big drum kit whereas nowadays you can have huge drums and you know the younger ones play differently so great show it was no but the thing is that the you know the rhythm section is so tight now with those two, uh, I mean, they're not young, but a younger generation. Younger. And now, you know, whatever Keith and Ronnie are putting s sloppy over it, it all has a good basis. Yeah? Anyway, what was your best concert you ever been on stage? The thing well, that I suppose the most memorable is the one in India in front of a million people. One million people. Yeah, I mean, I must say, I must add that they hadn't come to see me specifically, they'd come to see this very famous Indian guru called Sai Baba. But that was he pretty amazing. He asked you amazing. to play there. Yeah, he asked me to play for his birthday. I mean, I played quite often for him, but this was huge. I've never seen such a huge crowd. And when the camera turns around, because it's on a video, and you see the crowd, it's jaw-dropping. I mean, it's bigger than any crowd that probably the Stones have played in, let's face it. So that was amazing. But, you know, I've got such good musicians after all these years of being in the business, I know how to pick great musicians. So we have a ball most nights, every night. It was great. So uh, I can't really think of any bad times, because if you've got, it's like if, you've got a, if you're a sailor and you've got a good ship, you go, you sail well. I've got a great band, so it makes me sing well. Dana, thank you very much thank you, Rudy. for being my guest. Guys and boys and girls, don't forget to buy this book. I mean, after you bought mine. <laughs> no. Yes. You mean like that? I'll oh put yeah. It in front. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, but it's a really great book, and as you say, it has great pictures in there. Dana, I love you to death. Anytime. And uh, you say love and respect, and I say peace and love and five star okay. hotels. Good, then say it into the camera peace and love and five star hotels. Love and respect. You want to 
wanna know what goes on backstage Oh, come on Let me take you by the hand Ow! Rudy, are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen The way I see it, Barry This should be a very dynamite show you know, I have no idea what the name of this program is, but you're watching it. Backstage. All you ever want. Backstage. All you ever need. Backstage. Your dreams will be fulfilled once you are there. You'll never want to leave. You want to sell your ass for that backstage pass. Backstage. Just for the invited